Labour's being told communication will have to be a key priority this year. The Prime Minister could announce which policy will get the axe today after promising to refocus government priorities. Massey University's Grant Duncan says Three Waters legislation and the TVNZ-RNZ merger are the most controversial policies. He says the narrative around Three Waters, particularly the co-governance aspects, has run away from the government. That's overshadowed that the general idea is to make sure we get clean water and environmentally sound wastewater. The government hasn't clearly explained to New Zealanders why it will make that great deal of difference. Fears an economic storm will follow flooding in Auckland. Westpac senior economist Satish Ranchot says damage to housing and infrastructure is likely to be in the vicinity of half a billion dollars. He says the prices of rent, insurance and construction could all increase in the short and medium terms. Ranchot says the flooding has disrupted the production of fresh produce and will see increased prices for at least the next few months. Fears thousands are still trapped under rubble after the devastating earthquake near the Turkey-Syrian border. More than 5,000 people have been confirmed as dead following the 7.8 magnitude quake on Monday. Hundreds of aftershocks have rolled through and it's estimated the death toll could surpass 20,000 people. Red Cross New Zealand's Vivian Iwini says this is a critical search and rescue period. There's significant damage. Over 3,500 buildings have been destroyed. It's freezing cold weather, snowy in part, and that's going to hamper the response. The government's offering $1.5 million in humanitarian support. Police are dealing with more cases of retail crime than ever before. Latest figures show police received 10,000 reports of retail crime in October last year, the most ever recorded. The average in the year to November was more than 8,500 a month. An investigation is underway after separatist fighters in Indonesia allegedly kidnapped a New Zealand-born pilot. It's understood the small commercial Susi airplane had five passengers on board when it was set upon after it landed in Papua. Local police and military authorities say personnel have been sent out to search for the missing people. Bikies have descended on Southland for what's said to be the largest motorcycle rally in the Southern Hemisphere. South Island drivers may have spotted groups of motorcyclists heading south ahead of the annual five-day Burt Munro Challenge set to begin today. Georgia O'Connor Harding reports. Southland police have been on high alert and on early Friday officers stopped a convoy of tribesmen motorcycle club gang members as they headed to Christchurch for a patching ceremony. Police say while the challenge is not directly related to gangs, many gang members are anticipated to attend due to their interest in motorbikes. Thousands of students will receive results for New Zealand scholarship exams today. The scholarship program provides money for tertiary education to top students in their last year of schooling. Approximately 10,000 students attempted one or more scholarship subjects last year. And the top scholar award winners will be announced tomorrow. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel to stay up to date with all the latest news from the New Zealand Herald. Click the subscribe button below or check out one of the videos here and head over to nzherald.co.nz for more details on these stories and more.